God. That's a toe tapper. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you, choir. What a blessing. But I was looking forward all week to this, <coughs> this time together with you in the Word. You'll turn with me to Psalm 66. And uh, I was just blessed as I put this sermon together last Sunday night and uh, have been just chewing on it all week and just rejoicing in what this psalmist was really telling us about. So the sermon is called, Come and Hear. And it really reminded me of Philip and Nathaniel when Philip had found or met Jesus along the way and man, he was just he just knew that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the one. He was the one sent of God. And he went to Philip and said, come and hear that we found him. We found him. We found Jesus. And he's from Nazareth. And remember Nathaniel said, can anything good come from Nazareth? And immediately Philip said, come and see. Come and see. Well, this, this psalmist in Psalm 60 Six is saying, come and hear. Come and hear what I've got to share with you. Here's a man who has a story to tell, and he simply can't keep it to himself, eager in every way for the opportunity to give his testimony. In verse 16, he said, come and hear all who fear God, and I will tell you of what he has done for my soul. What a, what a testimony. Come and hear. I want to tell you everything he's done. My soul, what he's done in me. And that should be our contagiousness too. We should be motivated and inspired by what God has done in us and he's doing in us even today. Amen? Amen. We should be excited about it. Just stop to think about what marvelous things God is doing. Not only in us individually, but what he's doing with us as a congregation and the birthing of a, a whole new church called All Souls Church in Green Camp, Ohio. Wow! Today, we, we know that there's probably about 14 people that are going to go with Rhett and Susan and be a part of the core group that's going to make an impact. And not just, not just influence, an impact on that town of Green Camp and beyond. Fourteen people, that's kids and all. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a joy to stand and say, we are on the edge of watching the Holy Spirit move in a powerful way. Not just in Green Camp, but listen to me, folks. He's moving here in a powerful way. And it's exciting. This man, this psalmist, said, come in here. I want to tell you of all the things the Lord has done in me. Well, what was the subject of his story? He said, let me tell you what God has done for me. He has a personal testimony, a thrilling and abiding testimony of God touching his life. Look at verse 3 of Psalm 66. How awesome are your works. Here's a man, here's a psalmist, here's a songwriter who penned these words by the flowing and moving of the Spirit upon him to share with us that God was awesome in his works, in his life. And he had made a dramatic, abiding difference in him. Well, look over at Psalm 71. Here's another testimony of the psalmist. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 15, he said, My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and all of, of your salvation all day long, for I do not know the sum of them. And I don't know... I don't know all, but I know one thing. I know that I will declare your righteousness and the salvation that you brought into my life all the day long. I will come with
with the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, yours alone. Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. <laughs> what, a, what a testimony. What, you've taught me from my youth, and I sh sh uh, still declare your wondrous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to all who are to come. He's talking of legacy. He's giving testimony of legacy of what God has done in his life. That God has richly blessed. That God, in his testimony, he declares his righteousness. That he is righteously faithful, truthful, and good to him. Wow, what a testimony. Isn't that what we should be? To stand and say, yes, God has done that in my life. God is doing great things in my life. Not just yesterday, but even today. God is doing great things. How about it? Is God doing something awesome and great in your life? Yes. Can you stand and say, I am blessed. Yes. I am favored. I walk in the word of God. I obey his word. And he has been faithful and truthful and good in me. Whew. Wow. It should be. Verse 23 and 24 says, My lips shall shout for joy when I sing praises to you and my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue also will utter your righteousness all day long. The legacy that he was speaking and declaring and praising God and shouting out. It was a legacy of confidence in God. Of a call to, to mind of what God has done and that is carrying out His Word. God is true to His Word as we simply walk hand in hand with Him. A compelling testimony. The psalmist in Psalm 66 and 71 were compelled to declare. The things that God had done. They had first-hand knowledge of the Lord God himself. God Almighty had touched their life. His testimony comes to us that our hearts can know the same God. For me, I look back in the early days when I met the Lord. It was so exciting. And I have found that over time, yes, the Lord has taught me from my youth. But over time, my hair is grayed. And I am getting older. But I can say that over this time, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I can say that God is faithful. I can say that I still cry before him. And weep before him because of his great love, grace, and mercy. His favor and blessing he's bestowed upon me. And when I selfishly get caught up in self-pity, the Lord speaks to me and says, Yes, but Pat, see what I've done in your life. See what I've done. The Lord did that for me just last night. Diane gave me a card. And it simply said, I'm so thankful that you're my pastor. And that you're my Bible teacher. You've taught me. And she said, I, I have seen the fulfillment of 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 in your life. You see, Thessalonians 5, 24 was the verse that got me through seminary. And you think, well, 
how tough was cemetery, cemetery, yeah, the seminary? Uh, <laughs> you must understand that I thought I was dumber than a bunch of boys. I couldn't read. And God, in his marvelous way, called me and brought to pass. So as faithful as he who calls you, who will bring it to pass? Hallelujah. Little things. God is just... Little things touch my life, just like that simple card of a loving wife. I know that's a testimony. That's a testimony of the faithfulness and goodness and truthfulness of God. Is there anybody here that can stand and say the same? Now is the time. <laughs> Thank you. What? What do you want to share? I'm just blessed. <laughs> That's a good testimony. Amen, brother. Roger. Praise God. Because of grace. Anybody else? Brother, I'm not sure who said it, but I'm just blessed here, and I just thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Peter? Today is my daughter's birthday. And I remember 34 years ago this morning looking down that bassinet and saying, This kid's going to be somebody great. And she's not a princess or a queen or a president, but she's my daughter. And I don't praise God because of what she's done, but because of who she is. And now her children, our grandchildren, are reading their devotionals on their own without being prompted. They're 9, 8, and 6 years old. And said, I'm not What a blessing. It promises that your generations will be a blessing if you're faithful. So Amen. God has done something right through us. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 sermon here. <laughs> the beauty of today. Yes? Oh, I have to praise the Lord because when I retired several years ago, I thought my life was over with. But God has shown me it's just beginning. There's many things to do. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's awesome. God's blessed you richly. Amen. Who else? Well, I got you. I'm blessed like everybody else. I'm blessed like Pete. My son was 44 yesterday. Wow. <laughs> and the 25th. But anyway, we celebrated his birthday last night. My grandsons are there in Connecticut. They are, they are changing churches. They're going to another church called Salem. And uh, they have a youth group back there. And the boys are so excited about going there. And uh, my daughter was there. <coughs> quiet for a bit. But anyway, <laughs> I'm so blessed. Steve came up today. He's going to visit the city church. And, and we're going to miss him. And, we had a moment there, and it was exciting. And, you know, I, you guys, I feel your love. I truly feel your love. And I pray for you guys daily. It's such a great joy. Amen. Somebody back here stood up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a quick one. I have a little niece, big niece, now. For the 39 years, wanted nothing but to be married and have all three family. And on her 40th birthday, she had a bunch of men. Little son, and it's without the children. Mm. And she prayed about this, the Lord granted it to her. Uh -huh. <laughs> Praise God. Well, 
God is good, isn't he? Amen. We all have testimonies. There isn't the one person here that hasn't been touched by the presence and power and the preeminence of God himself. What a testimony. And how it broadens out to listen to stories. We're listening. You know, when you think that a church is kind of going through issues or whatever, we're not perfect. But the testimonies share that we're open to the Lord continually moving in our lives. That's the beauty of testimony. That's the beauty of, of, of us declaring one to another. That's the encouragement of knowing, hey, God's moving in his life. I know he's moving in mine. We'll just be open to it. The outline talks about not only what the subject of his story is, but what God had done for him. This man in Psalm 66 discovered that God answers prayer. In verse 19 through 20, it said, certainly God has heard and given heed to the voice of my prayer. Bless be God, who has turned away, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness to me. God answers faith-based prayers. And prayer, this man discovered, was no longer, it was no longer in question whether. If there was a form about it, it was about the prayer as a force and made a difference. He knew that prayer worked because it had worked in his life. God's power was great. God's resources are endless. And God responds to faith. This is his testimony. He discovered that God answers prayer. He discovered that God's secret to victorious living was obedience. In verse 18, it says, If I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. No, he walked in obedience to the Lord and to God's word. In 1 John, if you'll turn back to 1 John, chapter 3. I'm one of those guys that picks out scriptures from time to time, from place to place. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. This is His commandment, that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as He commanded us. And the one who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. We know by this that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. We ask, God answers. God speaks, we obey. God sends his Spirit. We receive the abiding of him in us. And the abiding of the Spirit of God, that we might abide in Him and give evidence to that. You see, he discovered that God answers prayer. He discovered that victorious living is just simply about obeying the Word of God. When God speaks, we obey, step by step. The supreme lesson that this psalmist, it was clear in a deeper, a clearer and deeper knowledge of God himself. That is back in verse 5 of Psalms 66. Come and see the works of God who is awesome in his deeds toward the sons of men. God's presence, God's power, God's preeminence. This is our testimony. This is what you and I can walk in as well. Who does he tell this story? Or why does he tell this story and why do we? Well, it's pretty simple. We declare what God has done for us by what he's done in us. Because of what we are and whose we are. Don't need to turn to Acts chapter 4, but it's the story that really had its beginnings in chapter 3. And the story in chapter 3 of Acts was that Peter and John went to pray and 
There was the beggar at the temple. And he was begging for alms. And Peter said, look at me. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And he took his hand and he picked him up. And he began to walk and leap and praise God. And he followed them into the temple and they were rejoicing. And it says that the whole temple was buzzing about this testimony of this man who had been begging for years. Was now walking and leaping and praising God. Declaring with shouts of praise what God had done in him. In chapter 4, the priests and the scribes and the Sadducees, they got all upset about this. And they put Peter and John into custody. They brought him into custody. And they said, don't speak the name of Jesus any longer and any more at any place. And Peter and John said, what you, whether it's right in your eyes or not, we are compelled to speak the name of Jesus. We are compelled. We cannot help ourselves. We will stand in the boldness of God's Spirit and declare Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. He is Messiah. They declared with boldness because of what Christ had done in them. Secondly, they declared what God has done for us because we are commanded to. Mark chapter 5, you don't need to turn there either, but I'll just tell you the story, was that Jesus and the disciples were going across the sea, and when they got to land, the demonic of Gary had come, and he was uh, doing all kinds of antics and so forth, and, and Jesus, remember the story, said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, and he said, you know, they said, cast, don't, don't hurt us, just cast us into that heard a swine, and you know, the story goes, they, they, the swine ran into the sea and drowned, and boy, it just upset everybody. Here was a man in the story who was helpless and hopeless. And then Jesus spoke to him, and he brought conversion into his life. Here was a man that was helpless and hopeless, and God... Jesus spoke the word of deliverance into his life, and he was set free. It was a divine movement of God that was dramatic, it was definite, and it was deliberate. And he was free. And the man stood in all calmness and in control of himself. Do you understand? He was in the grip of God. And he was set free. And he says to Jesus, bid me to follow you and come with you. And Jesus said, no, go home and tell what God has done for you and done in you. He says the same thing to us. He says, stand up. Give declaration. Give testimony. Give witness. Tell your co-workers, tell your, your neighbors, tell whoever, and tell them of what Jesus has done. Because if we truly have been touched by God's presence, power, and preeminence, by his faithfulness, truthfulness, and goodness, certainly we've got something that should stir us to stand and declare. What is going to make an impact on Green Camp? It is not a building. It is people who are being touched and impacted by the Spirit of God are going to declare to a hurting world one that is found hopeless and homeless and need of great a move of God that's divine, dramatic, definite, and deliberate because they see it in the face of those who attend a church on the corner. Church, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Standing and declaring. 
The third thing is we declare what God has done for us because we are gripped with a faith, a learned faith, a living faith, a lasting faith. That is that our faith, and we continue to learn day by day how to exercise and appropriate our faith. We live by faith. We, it is a lasting, enduring faith. A faith that is confident that God cares, committed for, to God's purpose, and controlled by God's word and will. Gripped with passion to know Christ and to make him known. Ooh, hallelujah. Anybody else want to give testimony today? <laughs> I got one more. You do? For five years time. Praise <laughs> God. I've seen a deepening of spiritual commitment by people in this church like ever before. We're not a body of people who are 150 wide and inch deep. I've seen people get deep with their, with their conviction and their commitment to the Holy Spirit and response to it. That's a daily praise. Amen. Anybody else? Go ahead, Brian. If you look at that stained glass, the second one there, below it is Albert Duff, who I think passed away when World War I. Yes. And that one is different from the other one in the side. That one has an image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of where you are in the sanctuary, his eyes follow you. I've been compelled by the Holy Spirit to mention that because it took me years to realize that his eyes are for me. I tried to spell our name, but his eyes are for him. <laughs> Visitors were part of the, what's called the four C's, the uh, con Conservative Congregational Christian Conference, about 300 churches around the country. And um, we get their newsletter, it's called the 4C. And in the newsletter this month, it says, and just this is a testimony, here's what it says Salem Evangelical Church in Marion, Ohio, experience, it, it is experiencing excitement. Reverend Pat Street, pastor of Salem and head of the Four C's Spiritual Life Committee, has recently printed a booklet called Daring, Def uh, Definite, and Deliberate Prayer. The title conveys the kind of prayer Pat and Salem see both as needed and, pos and possible in all of our churches. Pat has just led a, a prayer seminar based on his study at the Fluvanna Community Church in Jamestown, New York. Further, Salem Evangelical Church is embarking on a new road and has plans to plant a new church. A neighbor, neighboring church in Green Camp is handing the keys to Salem Church. Salem Evangelical has, or will be giving the building, property and furnitures, and all that is with it. There are the plans and details ahead for a new All Souls Church. And the Holy Spirit is leading. Things begin on March 1st. Now, of all that was said in that testimony that was written, what struck me were the words, the Holy Spirit is leading. What a testimony. What a testimony. He's leading us. He's directing us. We're right in the midst of his grip. Hallelujah. What better place to be but to be in the secret place of God, the holy place of God. Hallelujah. To be in his presence, to witness his power, to bear witness of his preeminence. Amen. Amen. We've got a story to tell. Hear it. Pastor, what I uh, am impressed with at the moment is not only um, is this church body see and, and a, a district level writing group see uh, the Lord is happening, the communities 
see as well. The non-church, the neighborhood, the people, you know, the, there's, this, there's that, that old course that said, people need the Lord. People need the Lord. And if it was true when the fellow wrote it, it's still true today. It'll be true tomorrow. People need the Lord. And I look around and I, I see people that connect with my life in various ways, you know, that I never would have dreamed that the Lord could have woven us together in this way. And for these things to be, can I say, playing out the way they're playing, none of us could have made it happen. No, it's so true. It just, it's, it's the Lord's hand. It's the Lord's hand. So how, how can we say anything except praise the Lord who does all things well and say, yes, I'll go your way and then let me walk with you, Lord. I thank you for all, all the you folks who have influenced my life. I, I just see Vicki over there. Just, I just want to say a word of testimony, a word of uh, appreciation for her dad sharing with me back when I was a wretched, wretched runaway youth. He delivered a, a track to me. He didn't know my name. I didn't know his name until 25 years later. Delivered a track to me that said, do you, do you want to know Jesus? Do you want to have peace in your life? I'm thankful for the effort that each of you have connected with me. And as we continue to do our thing in the Lord, it's going to be amazing how the Lord you know, affects or effectively reaches communities and people's lives beyond anything we can imagine. Oh, that's crazy. Amen. What God's going to be doing in new camp is resurrection. But what he's going to be doing here is redemption. And I don't mean, I mean resurrection in that a Baptist church that died is giving way to the resurrection and birth of a new work of God. And what I mean by the work of redemption here is that God is rich in us. And he's going to bring people into our midst. When those 14 that are going are gone, there's going to be room for more to come that we might give testimony and declare to them Jesus is Lord. The Holy Spirit's working. God can answer any need that is there. God can bring you from a hopeless state to one that is rich in mercy, grace, and love. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray that today, today's message was inspirational to me. It is encouraging to me. I pray the same to all of us. For all of us, I pray that it stirs up in us. That we look for every opportunity to stand and say, come in here and declare your greatness. To declare how faithful you've been to us. How truthful you've been to us. How good you've been to us. Oh Lord, let our lives so shine that we have impact on people's lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.